Hello everyone and welcome back to the PlayStation 2 Retrospective, the show where I look at PlayStation 2 games on anything but an actual PS2. Today we're going to be taking a look back at the 14th best selling game on the PS2, coming in at an impressive 4.6 million copies, God of War. For transparency's sake, I am playing the HD collection on the PS3, which is a quote unquote remaster of the original game. It's basically just a ROM of the PS2 game, but it's running at 720p at a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. God of War was originally released on March 22, 2005, and was developed by Santa Monica Studios. The game's directed by David Jaffe, who's well known for his work on the Twisted Metal series, as well as the all time classic Mickey Mania. I wrote that as like a fun joke, but apparently the game's actually pretty good, so I'll have to check that one out. Actually, there's a lot of notable names who worked in the original God of War, such as Stig Asmussen, who recently just directed Respawn's Jedi Fallen Order. There's also Charlie Wen, the now co-head of Marvel Studios' visual development department. That is a fucking tongue twister. And of course, our very own Corey Barlog, the current director for the God of War series and Twitter funny man. Jaffe's idea came for the series after he smashed both Clash of the Titans as well as Heavy Metal Magazine together. He's also stated that Onimusha was an obvious influence, as well as a mountain of others, including Gladiator, DMC, and Eco. And the story brands some of these influences right on its sleeve. That was a bad transition, but I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it in. The game has this morbid and dark tone even in the brightest sections of the story. It is a literal Greek tragedy about a man destroying the being who took everything away from him. It's not exactly the deepest narrative I've ever seen, and this early Kratos is just kinda there. You know, just being a woman handling, innocent killing, familicide committing, angry psychopath. But as a bare bones revenge story, it makes for an enjoyable, engaging tale that just takes you from point A to point B. Plus, I don't know about you, but to me, this game is visually one of the best looking games for the PlayStation 2. Not because it exactly looks amazing, some of these models look like old G.I. Joes from the 80s, but because of the excellent fixed camera techniques that actually elevate this game from a white Spartan guy kills things to a cinematic masterpiece. Okay, that was a little overzealous, but you get the point. Writing this video has been the biggest task I've given myself in a very long time. During production, I've actually found myself at a loss for words. And it's not because I love God of War or even because I hate it. It's because this game has such a big following and an incredible legacy on not just the PlayStation 2, but the entirety of the PlayStation brand, even up to today. So when I say what I'm about to say, understand that this game is not bad. I just have opinions on things. It's it's kind of the point of what I do here. God of War is a big stepping stone for the action adventure genre, as vague of a title as that is. Despite how much David Jaffe has played down how simple God of War is, the fact is that it's historically significant to the gaming medium and should be recognized as such. It pushed the PlayStation 2 to provide a Greek tragedy with the scope of a Hollywood film. I just really, really didn't want to finish this game. I enjoyed God of War, for the most part. We'll get to that soon enough. I just feel like it didn't gel with me like it does for everybody else, even today. I was almost on autopilot for a majority of the game, which, mind you, isn't always bad. Of course, I played this game on easy like I usually do, and when certain people hear that, their first inclination is to go, well, if you raise the difficulty, then maybe you'd have a challenge and begin to enjoy yourself. Look here, persons who's saying this, because I know you're out there. If you told me that you didn't like cooking, and in response to that statement, I took away your stove and only gave you sticks and rocks, that wouldn't help you at all. You'd just enjoy it even less. So that argument's in the fucking garbage. And besides that, I don't even hate God of War's combat. I do love me a good button masher here and there, and God of War is the creme de la creme of making mashing buttons feel satisfying. From watching behind the scenes featurettes and interviews, it seems like the entire goal behind God of War was to be the most brutal action adventure game ever. To be extremely gory, bloody, and filled with anger. Jaffe states multiple times that the game was meant for people to express their dark fantasies. And as much as that last part concerns me, God of War succeeds at providing this kind of experience. Every single execution feels like it has weight. Using your powers given to you by Poseidon, Hades, Zeus, 
Artemis, and Medusa is so satisfying. Specifically the Blade of Artemis as well as Poseidon's Rage. I always saw Poseidon's Rage being used in footage of this game and now I completely understand why. Not a big fan of the QTEs, but then again I literally never have been. Especially ones where you can't win the encounter without completing the QTE properly. Like, I get it, it's a cinematic moment and you want it to play out the way the director intended, but just let me wail on him. That pretty much only happens with boss encounters, which are fantastic in this game, despite there only being three bosses, with two of them having no place in the story whatsoever, but they're still pretty fucking cool. And that's what I mean when I say that this game has an amazing sense of scope and is just cool. It's cool to fight an undead minotaur, whose armor falls off and begins to show all of his muscles and tendons as he breathes fire. The Hydra fight was, nah, it was okay. But Ares is up there with Kingdom Hearts 1 Ansem as well as DMC5 Virgil for my favorite final boss fight. It's really, really cathartic and fun and beautiful to look at. It's also just nice to kick some ass. As much as this game can be frustrating, which we'll get to like right now, the combat's pretty great. It's mindless, it cramps my hands with QTEs and intense button mashing, but it's fine. However, the exploration is where my joy for this game begins to fucking fade. I love a game with DMC or Zelda-like exploration, where you traverse different dungeons, solving puzzles and finding items, and then you use them in order to proceed, then rinse and repeat. It's pretty fun. Some of the puzzles in God of War can be completed in my sleep, while others just really racked my brain to the point where I had to use a walkthrough. I'm not really against using walkthroughs, they're kind of like the modern version of official game guides, but ideally, I should be able to figure out the game on my own. This is not a huge issue for me whatsoever, I'm actually not bothered by this at all. You see, my problem is with the platforming. Oh. My. Kratos. <laughs> this is where God of War can be a bit of a roller coaster, ranging from easy peasy to so frustrating that I want to chuck my PS3 into the Indian Ocean. It's not that I can't do platformers or that I don't know when to jump properly. For me, part of the issue is this damn camera. As much as it makes a lot of the game look beautiful and amazing and so cinematic, because it's fixed, I can't alter it to see where I'm going. Meaning that you'll often have to fail sections multiple times in order to even know where you have to go. Too often did I pass a difficult section after dying for like 20 minutes straight, only to find out that the direction I went in was optional. Don't even get me started on the puzzles. I'm having this section separate from the other one because these don't really feel like puzzles. They're more a test of endurance. The devs just want to see how bad College Boy Ricky really wants to see the end of the game. There's multiple of these infuriating things that just bring the game to a screeching halt. The tight walk over the beams with blades, the Poseidon puzzle, the timed box puzzle, the spinning blade towers, the rotating poles in hell. I understand that this stuff is here to set this oppressive tone, reminding the player that Kratos is just a man, making the act of completing this journey that much more satisfying. But realistically, if none of these parts were in this game, God of War would go from like an 8 to 10 hour game to a 6 to 7 hour one, which is fine in my book. The game's pacing kinda drags as is. <sighs> I hope nobody hates me now. The reason I gave this video that much preamble in the beginning was so that you understand that I don't hate this game or even dislike it. It's important to this medium's history. It's fun, it's beautiful, it's got boobs if that's a selling point for you. <laughs> but at least for me, God of War 1 is a game where you kinda have to force yourself through all of the rough parts in order to reach the end, and after that, you'll probably never pick it up again for a very long time, if not Ever. The game has very little replay value whatsoever beyond costumes, a difficult challenge mode, and a super hard difficulty. And that's fine for those who like that stuff. I played it through once and that's more than enough for one lifetime. I do highly recommend playing through this game, even if you don't have a PlayStation console or if you've never played an action adventure game. Whether it be on PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, or through emulation, God of War 1 is still good. Yes, bad parts included. Now. To some people, God of War 2 is an even better game, so is this sequel as good as people say it is? Well, we'll have to find out. Eventually. Like, 50 years from now. Anyways, that's all I got for you guys. Like, subscribe, and all that jazz. I'll catch you guys next time. Later, kids. Have a good night.
God of War, I am his no longer. His is a journey fueled by rage. And madness. <laughs> <laughs>